Hi everyone, it's Kathy Chenna, the host of Tri-Cities Community TV. We are at the offices of the Fountainhead Network today, and with me, our guests are with the Asian Impact Society. We have the founder and the director with us. Uh, we are talking to Tiffany and Justina. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and we're going to talk about um, what the Asian Impact Society does and who you are and some of your upcoming initiatives today. So um, who'd like to give us an overview on, uh, on what the Asian Impact Society is and how did it all come about? Well, uh, Asian Impact Society, we are obviously a not-for-profit here in the Tri-Cities. Yes. And we came into be during the pandemic mm -hmm. when we saw a huge rise in anti-Asian sentiment within, unfortunately, in our very own community. Mm -hmm. And we felt that we needed to create something to support victims of these uh, racist crime. Mm -hmm. So we created an Asian Impact Society. And our focus is really to uh, build awareness about the harm of racism within our community, uh, seek collaboration with key uh, community leaders and organi organizations to make this a better and safer place to be. Mm -hmm. And above all, we also want to educate our next generation about, you know, the harms of racism and we really want to build an anti-racist, diversity embracing, multicultural society here. That's amazing and you're, and you're right, I mean, our next generation definitely needs to uh, be educated on, on these things because if we're not doing that, then where do we leave, you know, where do we leave things as, as we pass on. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Tiffany, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what happened that day at Lafarge. Uh, you were out for a walk and uh, with uh, with a friend of yours. And, and can you just recap that quickly for us, just so people know like what you um, have had to deal with and, um, and how that impacted you? Yeah, um, it was um, uh, during uh, dinner time. We were just uh, walking around the uh, close to the Lafarge Lake, mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, one of the uh, ladies uh, also walking around the Lafarge Lake mm -hmm. and asked us to take a picture using her phone. Right. Um, and we gently let her know that it's COVID time, we will not be comfortable to touch your phone. Right. Um, then she come back and saying, this is from you, that you bring the virus uh, to us. Um, so quickly we um, stand up for ourselves mm -hmm. and make sure that she understand we are we are not happy to hear this. Um, so and then that's um, main main reason that we create uh, Asian Impact Society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you were a victim of, of of really like a hate crime in in some way. You know, people verbally attacked you, and and I, I mean, I sometimes will pause, like especially during COVID, and even even now, you know. Um, Oh, let me take a picture with your phone. And I may not want someone to take that photo with my phone and have their fingerprints on it, but it's not because like, I don't like the person. Mm -hmm. It's just because it's my choice. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't really want to do that. So, so from that, you did get a lot of media attention. And you know, from that, you guys decided that, hey, we really want to do something for the greater good of all beings. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not just happening to me and us, and it's happening to lots of different cultures out there. And, and so then you created Asian Impact society that's right right and it's been going on for how long now almost three months oh three years <laughs> three months <laughs> three months <laughs> three so time flies when you're having it, fun. Does, it, flies. <laughs> it does it does it does so it's been about three years and you're three a non-profit years. and right. and what kind of initiatives um have you been doing over these last three years well we're very excited mm -hmm. um we've been fortunate enough to be granted uh the Multiculturalism and Anti-Racism Grant from the BC of uh, BC government, mm -hmm. and where you, we've used this fund to create a children's book that is meant to educate the young generation about uh, culture, multiculturalism, diversity, and less, this one is a children's book, so we're not dealing with the ha heavy topic of anti-racism, right. but about diversity and multiculturalism, and accepting who you are within your community. Mm -hmm. uh, we're excited about this book. Uh, um, and we'll be distributing it to School District 43, as well as the library, and make it available to the public. That's so fantastic. And, and why, tell me, um, Mina's Lunch, can you tell me a little bit about the book? Who's Mina? 
you, you want to take this one? It's a great Genesis story. <laughs> yes, um, we actually, uh, when we create this project, we actually reach out to our community. Mm -hmm. We ask our community to submit their stories. Oh, so, fantastic. Yes, so uh, we had stories from children, we have story from adult, we have story from two generations before, mm -hmm. um, great stories. Um, sometimes it, it's just sad to hear some of the story that yes. our young generation is facing. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you read that book, at the end we will have uh, actually have some discussions that can open uh, to elementary school uh, children mm -hmm. and our educators so that uh, we can promote multiculturalism and and anti-racism. Mm -hmm. So Mina, um, it, uh, the story actually coming from uh, Stephanie? Stephanie Shea? Uh, uh, Steph right. Yes. yes. Um, so with all the community leaders yes. and um, our um, um, partners, uh, we ch from all those stories we choose that as, um, as this uh, children's book. Um, and I think it's uh, her yeah. stories is coming from herself. Herself, it's yes. a true story. It's a true mm -hmm. story. It's a true mm -hmm. story about a childhood experience right. uh, that she had in school, mm -hmm. and how her mom supported her through just coming up to the right conclusion, accepting who she is. Uh, so Stephanie's adult now. Mm -hmm. She has a family here, and uh, so she'll be coming out to. She's been supporting us uh, with this journey as well. And uh, our artist is Kristen Hepburn, yes. and. Uh, she's uh, brought this to life mm -hmm. but the most important thing is here I think that we really want to involve the community and hear as many stories as possible mm -hmm. to create this book and that's mm -hmm. really what's happened here we've brought the community together created the story we're sharing it and we're hoping this will be the first of many other mm -hmm. pro projects uh, that we'll be pursuing yeah I'm really glad you started with a children's book again we talked about education earlier and how important that is so just really quickly though like so Stephanie submitted her story she's an adult with a family but is, is so Amina is that a made-up name it's her her name for herself in the book Okay. <laughs> this is okay. her story. Okay, it's her story. Yeah. Her story. She just didn't Fantastic. want to use her own name. No, no, I totally get that. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I totally, I totally get that. So um, Mina's lunch is going to be uh, given out throughout uh, School District uh, 43 and in the Tri-Cities Libraries. And when would that be happening? In the next few weeks? We're doing it right now. Right now. Oh, that's fantastic. So hopefully there'll be um, a lot of students that pick this up and get some educational information about uh, belonging and multiculturalism. And um, uh, I, I grew up in an Italian household, and while people were all bringing peanut butter and jam to school, I had no idea what that even tasted <laughs> like, right? So so I, I, I totally understand that. Now, moving on to another initiative that's coming up for you guys um, a, a little bit down the road, but I do want uh, us to talk about it. You are partnering with... Um, PlayStays Arts, you're doing an art exhibit there, and that's coming up, and um, maybe you can tell us, Justina, a little bit about the um, the art uh, platform and who are you looking for, and what kind of art will you be displaying or hoping to display for the uh, coming up in June? Okay, thanks, those are great questions. So this one, uh, we also received another grant. I mean, the community's been fabulous. We yes, received the it. Spirit of Coquitlam grant to put on this project. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really came out about this summer when we really wanted to, again, engage the community and bring in stories and sharing uh, with the greater community. And um, here is, we've done the, we did the storybook. Now let's do this story sharing through art. Mm -hmm. And the theme of this event will be multiculturalism, diversity, and anti-racism. We're hoping to educate the public through imagery, through the artistic um, perspectives of the people who are submitting the work. This is an open call for artists that will take place actually effectively now until June 1st. Yes. All ages are welcome, no matter what their artistic um, skill levels are. We're looking for emerging, professional, whoever who feels that they have a message to share in their artwork uh, will accept all sorts of medium. Right, I was going to ask you, what media are you yeah. accepting? Yes, Even yes. 3D, some ceramic okay. work as okay. well. Great. And uh, our goal is to hopefully put on display at the exhibit of Paz Day's art 
everything that could be submitted, but it is will be limited by space. So we're, we're um, but submit what you can. We're urging the public to do that. And just to incentivize it a bit, we have a sponsor who will give you some cash prizes. So there's some little bit of uh, incentive there to encourage participation. And again, all age levels from uh, young elementary school mm -hmm. age, mm -hmm. middle school age, uh, high school, and you know, adults. To adults, okay, yeah. that's great. And um, in terms of when the display is going to happen, the exhibit itself, you are taking uh, open call now until June 1st. Yes. And then um, when are you hoping for the display to actually exhibit? Uh, it'll be in exhibit at Place des Arts from September 8th to November 9th, okay. uh, in-person exhibit, and there'll also be an online exhibition as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Good. Where can people find out more information about this open call? We have uh, tremendous artists, um, you know, in Port Coquitlam, in Coquitlam, and as well in, in Port Moody and beyond. I don't think mm -hmm. that it's only going to be localized to the Tri-Cities. As mm -hmm. long as they uh, fit your criteria, yeah. like you said, they're, they're going to be accepted as long as the space allows. Mm -hmm. So where can people find out more? more information yeah um, they will be um, they can find the information on our website yes. which is triple uh, w at Asian impact society .com. okay great and there is there anything is there any final words that you would like our viewers to to know uh, a little bit more about yourselves any any lasting uh, lasting words uh, the only word to say thank you to the community and uh, for uh, being here to support us. And if you know anyone that has undergone some difficulty, uh, ask them to reach to us. To us. We're here to support you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there's a lot of good in this community. Mm -hmm. And we want to find that good and share that good with everybody else. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, ladies, for being here. Uh, you were listening to Asian Impact Society, Justina and Tiffany, talking about Mina's Lunch, their new book that will be uh, it is, uh, spread out through the Tri-Cities, uh, throughout the schools, as well as an art exhibit that's coming up, and they're looking for artists just like yourself. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Kathy Chenna.